Hey there YouTubers, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan, and I'm doing something of a crossover video today because I also have a pro wrestling and mixed martial arts website, so you may see this video pop up on there. Now, this company no longer exists under this name. Total Nonstop Action as an entity no longer exists. They were bought by Anthem Sports, the parent company of the Fight Network, and they're now simply called Impact Wrestling. So, this is uh, antiquated, I think you could say. It's something of a relic from older times. And it promises one TNA Legends and Stars autograph card in every box. I guess that makes the box worth $20 then, whatever one autograph you would get out of this box. But I don't think that's what I paid for this. In fact, the reason it's been sitting in my closet for a while is because... I got it on clearance at some store on vacation when I saw they were just trying to get rid of it and in fact I found another box on clearance later so picked them both up for super cheap but it's been sitting around for long enough and I'm of a mind to unbox things these days because life is short and you're meant to enjoy the things that you have so unbox them and take them out and see what they are and take a look at them and that's what I'm going to do here with all of you. I'm going to open up this box of TNA trading cards and maybe a fun game we can play while we're doing this is see how many of these people are still in Impact Wrestling today. Wow, we got two layers of shrink wrap on here. There was the outer layer, which I guess was just for the retail store, and then there's the inner layer that has a Pacific Trading Cards logo. I think that comes out in the light. Hopefully you can see that. But uh, break both seals here, because we're going all the way, baby. We're getting right down to what's inside the box itself. Still looks like the exact same box, just with less plastic getting in the way. I believe it has a pop-up for display here. Looks like it's creased for that. Let me see if I can open up this retail box and make it look like it would on display. Yeah, there we go. That's what it would have looked like in the store on display. This part with AJ and Raven would have been on the front. As you can see, we got packs here with uh, Wildcat Chris Harris and Cowboy James Storm. Chris Harris, long gone. James Storm, he's still there. And uh, the phenomenal AJ Styles. That seems to be the... Oh, there's a Raven variant of the trading card packs as well. Let's see. Oh, there are only four cards in each pack. Wow. That's pretty cheap. I'm glad I got this on clearance and didn't exactly pay a whole lot for it. Let's start opening these packs up. Save myself some time and split open the top of each one. So we got the aforementioned Chris Harris. I noticed these cards have some nice gold foil on them for Pacific Coast, so that's cool. We got Slash. Boy, I barely remember him, and I was watching TNA back in the early 2000s like 0405. I used to order those Wednesday night pay-per-views. I do remember Goldilocks though. She was kind of a running joke between me and my wife because she had these promos where she would say, I don't want your money, I want your contract. She was really big on contracts. She wanted to control everybody. And there's a tattoo thing as promised for America's Most Wanted. Are these things numbered on the back? Is there a number order? Yeah, okay, we got 66, 74, 45, and 19. Well, maybe four in a pack isn't so bad if there aren't that many cards in the series. But that did happen with Animal Crossing after a while. With those Amiibo cards, we got a lot of repeats in the end. Yeah, Don Harris. If I was a little kid, I would do something very mean to that trading card, but... I'm a little more mature as an adult. Athena. Um, 
Was she one of those girls that danced at the top of the stage? I forget. I can't remember. Oh, D'Lo. Yeah, D'Lo was in TNA back then and uh, actually was a pretty good wrestler in TNA. Uh, came over from WWE and had more success there. Here's uh, Kaki Sonny Siaki, who they called the ace in the hole back then. He's got Shark Boy up for some kind of power move. Doesn't say what, but almost looks like it says Corded Rocks. Let me compare it to the uh, Goldilocks trading card. Yeah, it's the same girl. The pack with his picture on it. One could only hope. Strange but true fact. AJ was managed for a while in TNA by Vince Russo. So here we have somebody who's still in Impact now, Sanjay Dutt. He won the X Division title at their TV tapings in India. We have The Gathering. Now, that's a very telling card because, yes, that is Phil Brooks. CM Punk was in TNA for a cup of coffee before he went to WWE's ECW. And that was after his successful stint in Ring of Honor. Let's just see what the back of it has to say about him. Formerly under the guidance of Raven, Julio De Niro and CM Punk turned their backs on their leader and cost him his shot at the NWA title. Now, partners in crime, De Niro and Punk continue to harass Raven while climbing the ladder of the tag team division in route to a shot at the NWA Tag Team Championships. Again, that really dates these cards because back then TNA was actually using the National Wrestling Alliance titles. They had a, a agreement to promote NWA in exchange for getting to use their belts on television and in pay-per-views. Rudy Charles, Saban, was always a big fan of this guy. Unfortunately, he seems to have a lot of injury problems, but... He and Alex Shelley, when they team together as the Motor City Machine Guns, are a pretty phenomenal team. And why Pacific Trading Cards thought I would want a tattoo of their own logo, I just don't know. But here we have the franchise, Shane Douglas, who, again, was a thing in TNA back in the early 2000s, coming off of his run in ECW and WCW, among other places. Most people don't remember him as Dean Douglas in WWF, and that's with good reason. And Rick Santel, I don't know that he was even in TNA enough to put on a trading card and promote, but there you go. And Chris Saban and referee Andrew Thomas. Jeff Jarrett, yay, I really want a tattoo of him. Alright, let me... So the ratio, according to these trading packs, is that the autograph cards, Legends cards, are 1 out of 24 packs. So if there's 24 in this box, there should be one in here somewhere. Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels, no longer with TNA, but he is the Ring of Honor World Champion right now. The much-discussed Raven is there. Mike Posey. I believe Dropkick Mike Posey started out as a wrestler, became a referee. Oh, and we have a CM Punk trading card. That's cool. Yeah, it is weird to think back and remember that CM Punk was a TNA star for a while. Oh, and here's another tattoo card, Trinity, who also had a run in WWE's version of ECW. So, the CM Punk card is number 34. We'll sort that into the pile. And Mike Posey is number 60. Again, I seriously question why anybody wants referee trading cards, but that's just me. You know, Raven probably is not happy that he's number 35. He'd probably want to be number one in the set, but whatever. And the Fallen Angel is number 10. That seems somewhat appropriate for him. He's not Ty Dillinger, but he does have the most perfect moonsault I've ever seen, so that's a perfect 10. Man, we're still getting pretty lucky with the lack of repeats here, and I feel like I'm jinxing myself by saying that. Okay, let's go with the TNA tag team of the Wildcat, Chris Harrison. Cowboy James Storm. 
open up their pack and see what's inside. 